big, splashy sport being added to the Olympics this summer for Paris 2024 is breaking, also known as break dancing. So let's have a look today at the sport, how it'll go down at the Olympics, and who is participating. And in the comments, let me know what you think of breaking, becoming an Olympic sport. In my opinion, it's it's all fair game. <laughs> it's you know, it's kind of like gymnastics adjacent. I do think it's interesting that it's being added now so that the popularity of the sport I think it's fair to say has been in decline for the last you know, 20 years at least, but I'm never really against the addition of any sport that can be measured objectively and with these sort of performance sports, like the more artistic sports, that measure is often based on the level of difficulty, like a certain level of difficulty that can be compared from one competitor to the next. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about sort of the format and the scoring of breaking at the Olympics. So there are two events. One for the men. The, the event is called B-Boys. And one for the women. And that event is called B-Girls. And there are 16 competitors in each event. And something that I, I think I actually quite like about the format is that the event takes place over the course of one day. It is a long day. <laughs> but beginning to end, I think B-Girls will be August 9th and boys will be August 10th. Now that's, of course, it's tentative. I think, I think it is outside at Place de la Concorde. And so I'm assuming that if the weather is really bad, <laughs> they might have to um, rain check, so to speak, the event itself. But beginning to end, it's about five and a half six hours, and I think that includes a sort of like a break in between the two sections of the competition. So let's get deeper into that, those two sections. So, my understanding is that it'll be tournament style. So, the first stage, the qualification stage, will be a round robin think group stage. We recently talked about the Euros a lot <laughs> on this channel. I think about that group stage kind of thing where the competitors, 16 competitors per event, will be split up into groups of four and then everyone in that group will compete against athlete will compete against everyone else in their group. And then at the end of that round, the top two 
two from each team will advance to the quarterfinals, which is the beginning of the knockout stage. Now in the knockout phase, competitors will go one-on-one -on -one against each other. You know how you know how a knockout stage works. <laughs> to move forward. And I think that you know the whole idea of adding breaking to the Olympics is to draw a younger crowd to the Olympics more generally. The Olympic Committee has said as much. I'm not <laughs> I'm not, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's not gonna come to me, but I'm just like, uh, oh, it's gonna bother me. Anyway, it's, it's been said. <laughs> so, I think that making it a 1v1 tournament that goes into knockout phases does add some excitement, so in my opinion, that was the right format to choose over, say, a points ranking system like you see in a lot of the more artistic sports and artistic events at the Olympics. So, each battle in the qualifiers will consist of two 60 second throwdowns. So each um, competitor in each face off, let's say, will perform twice. For 60 seconds in the knockout phase, it's three times. So for a total of three minutes per competitor per round. And breakers will freestyle their routines to music, which is apparently <laughs> selected by the DJ, although I can't imagine that it'll be that spontaneous at the Olympics. I'm assuming <laughs> that there is a much more formal approval process and music will be pretty much pre-selected. I don't think it'll be as spontaneous as maybe they make it sound or as maybe it could be in more, um, I don't want to say amateur competitions, but non sort of world stage <laughs> competitions. Now there are nine judges to vote for the winner, and again, there isn't so much or at all any traditional scoring. Instead, the judges will use a slider to indicate the breaker who's leading the battle. So, you know what a slider is. <laughs> What the judges are looking for is technique, vocabulary, which is breaking terminology to mean the variety of moves that they, they perform, execution, musicality, which I think is an interesting criteria. Probably the most subjective judging crit cr criterion. Criteria. Cr cr yeah, criterion, I think. And if the athletes are actually coming in blind to the music that's been selected, I think this is where there could be some funny business behind the scenes. Some athletes might get some tip-offs. Crazier things have happened, but it is, you know, that it 
adaptability that musicality is an important part of the sport and so you would assume that at that level hopefully advance warning would not necessarily have that much of an advantage although and um, originality is the fifth criterion so when I say technique vocabulary execution musicality and originality each is weighed evenly each is worth 20% of the athlete's final score so very very basically in breakdancing you've got top rock and down rock top rock is when you're up on your feet down rock is really where the sort of flashy moments will happen and what you want to look for especially are the power moves and freezes because you know top rock I could probably top rock with the best of them <laughs> I, I was a child dancer but power moves think windmills think legs flying everywhere and freezes are when they freeze when they hold perhaps a difficult uh, position but that's not to knock top rock necessarily because you can really display that musicality that originality from top rock and maybe once we get to competitors um, I'll try to highlight some people where that the top rock just adds that next level like that's where you can see that they're really Olympians not only can they do the power moves and the freezes but they have that whole understanding of the sport and you can tell that it's practiced but also innate so in a weird way like the flashy point scoring moves are on down rock but on top rock you can really see if someone's honed their craft so who's competing there were a few different ways to qualify the world championships the continental qualifications the Olympic qualifier series um, the host country France had one place reserved for each event and then some um, invitational spots as well now the world champions okay let's talk about B girls first so the world champion is actually Lithuanian uh, known as Nika she's 17 years old and on the other end of the spectrum you've got Ayumi Ayumi Fukushima out of Japan and she is 41 years old she was the runner-up I think at the world champions just last year so like 41 means nothing and she qualified through the Olympic qualifier series now you will want to keep an eye on her fellow country woman country mate <laughs> to Amy Yuasa who came in through the qualifier series I think she's a real threat for gold at the Olympics she won the world games in 2022 she's just so fun to watch she seems weightless she looks like she's having so much fun so when I was just talking about how top rock will make an athlete will allow an athlete to s maybe stand out and maybe tip them over the edge I think Amy is one of those athletes look, look her up if 
you can. You'll see what I mean, hopefully. <laughs> now, Americans. I know we've got some Americans watching. You have Sunny Joy, who won the Pan American Games, and Logan Edra, known as Logistics, who came in through the qualifier series. And finally, for the girls, for the women's side, I want to highlight B-Girl Talaj, who is participating with the refugee Olympic team. She's in her early 20s now, like 21 or 22 years old. But she only discovered breakdancing at 17 through a Facebook video. And she ended up contacting the person in the video and joined a crew in Kabul where she was the only girl out of 56 members. So, an exciting competition for sure on the women's side. Now with the B-boys. Well, the world champion is American Victor Montalvo. B-boy Victor out of Florida. But I also need to Canadian Philip Wizard. He won the world championship, I think. I keep saying world championship, but I think 2022 was the world games. Um, he was the runner up for the world championship last year, but I really sincerely think that he can give the, Euro the US a run for their money at the Olympic. I think. I think Canada could snatch up a medal in the B-Boys event. And there's also a 40-year-old on the men's side, uh, Hong Ten, out of South Korea. He came through the Olympic qualifier series. I mean, this guy has been winning competitions since 2001. <laughs> at least, so he will surely show the kids how it's done. Some of them weren't even born when Hong Ten started winning competitions, so I think it's so fun to watch the old heads competing with, against the, I guess with the, it's like a very collaborative, um, well not collaborative, but like positive, congratulatory sport where people tend to really appreciate each other in the moment. But guys, that will be it for your breaking 101 today. I'm really excited to watch this in a few weeks, mid-August, and I hope it does well. Breaking has been excluded from the 2028 Olympics in LA, but the World Dance Sport Federation is trying to get a spot for uh, Brisbane 2032. <laughs> and obviously, the, the way that the event um, is received in Paris will have a huge bearing on whether it's approved. For Brisbane. Don't forget to let me know what you think 